Morning peeps, okay, I've been asked for um, how my big aquaponics bed works. Right, when I first thought about this was about five or six years ago and I saw a discovery program on how rivers basically clean themselves and I thought, ooh, good idea. So, being me, I searched YouTube and I found a couple of people had looked at it, but nobody was really into it. And there was one Englishman who came up with a bed, who, which was basically a, a pond like this. Yeah, and he was taking the water out of the pond and into an aquaponics bed next to it, using copper pipe, which I'd never suggest for fish anyway. Yeah, and he was feeding it back. So it was going that sort of direction. Yeah, I thought I'd do pictures today, just for the people that can't visualise things. Yeah, and that was his water. Yeah, which, in theory, you just dump the water in at the top and it falls out the bottom. But the problem is, water is the same as electricity. So if you've got a big square bed full of gravel, there you go, big square bed full of gravel. Yeah, water will fall in here with all its muck. Yeah, and it will clog this bit with all the muck. Then it will clog this bit, and that clog will leave all this section as anaerobic, which means basically it's rotting. There's nothing good in there. Yeah, because water wants to take the easiest way, it will then run straight across the top and find a way to the out, out vent. Yeah, which is never good. So basically, once it's built up this layer of crap here, yeah, what happens is it will run straight across the top and out and the whole bed dies. Yeah, so uh, that's how I built my bed the first time because, you know, these people said, this is how it works. You throw your water in, you take it out and it will do magical things to your plants. No, I killed the plant. And that was my first rendition, which of course didn't frightening work. So, what I then did, I thought, maybe it clogged because of all the crap and they're really not telling me something. So I built a bed, yeah, and I threw water in via a filter. There you go, look, a filter. And I threw me water in, we'll put it in at the other side this time, just to make the drawing easy. Yeah, so it's all going in just there, like that. And what happened is, it threw the water in quite nicely and then it started clogging this bit yeah not by the fact there's muck in it just by the fact you've got roots in there you've got things flying past you've got bugs birds you name it yeah and eventually you get to a point where the water again runs straight out the exit yeah bed lives because of the way it's built but not as healthily as it should. Yeah, so at this point I'm going, this is silly. So, well it's probably more than five years ago I built the first one, because the first one was on my old pond. Yeah, so I built a big box, and I do mean big, big. it was six foot by four foot and four foot deep. Yeah, and what I did is I thought, this is crap, you can't do it the way they say. So, yeah, I thought about it for a while and then I thought some longer. So I had my pump, there you go, common sign for a pump. Yeah, and I took the pump and I fed the water in down a standpipe with loads of holes in the bottom bit. Yeah, right to the very bottom. Now, what happens now is I thought, well obviously if I take it out of the bottom now, it's never going to use the top, that would be pointless. So, we'll take it out over here at the top. There you go, look, I'll even clean that bit off so it looks like an now. Right, so what happens then is your water runs along in a general direction of the outpipe. But of course it's filling up and eventually it fills up to this sort of point and then starts disappearing out like that. Yeah. 
And this is like kiddies, isn't it? Where's my big red wax crane and large sheets of paper? Yeah. But anyway, it sort of works, but not as well as it could. Because you still get that section there going slightly anaerobic. Now what I did in mine is, if I rub that out a minute, and I'll redraw the bottom bit, just so you can understand. Because I realised what was happening on the other ones, yeah, is I didn't put anything in this bottom section. The bottom 8 to 10 inches was spaced off, yeah, with pretty much anything I could find. Plastics, you name it, I threw it in there. And that was just a water gallery. So water would find it easier to run around, along the gallery, yeah, than it would to try and climb through the gravel. So the water generally, yeah, ran along the gallery, found it had to go up, yeah, and permeated through the gravel. Now that worked phenomenally. And I do mean phenomenally. Yeah, I had plants take off in that that I just couldn't keep control of and have to throw them. Yeah, so it was like, I think I've sussed it. So, We'll rub it out again and we'll go for the actual build of the big bed up there. Because obviously that one died many years ago and I ripped it out and then I used a... When I moved them over to the big pond that they're in now, I used an IBC with the same theory. Water gallery at the bottom, put your water right down the bottom and allow it to permeate up. Yeah, but IBCs are not the easiest things to control. They're a bit square and a bit deep. So, on the one I've currently got, it is 13 inches deep, yeah, 8 foot long, there we go, look, 8 foot, 13 inch, yeah, and 4 foot wide, which I can't draw, it's 2D drawing, I could, I could go that way, but I'm not going to, yeah, now, what we've done, yeah, I'm going to draw it backwards, so, so you'll just have to live with that, we've got the pump in the pond, pump. And the pump pumps his water and it comes to my filter. There you go. Now that takes the first layer of muck out of the water. Yeah, it's brilliant. Yeah, and that filters it into a little bucket with another filter on it that catches the bulk of the muck. Yeah, it's a pair of tights to be honest. If I'd, if I'd thought about it, because I've got the mesh now, I would have used mesh, but I was being lazy and I used tights again. Yeah, now, the gravel on this bed sits pretty much a full 13 inch depth. But buried in my gravel, I have pipes that go the full length of the bottom of the bed. So in the bottom of the filter, I'll draw filter from above, here we go, filter, yeah, can't draw, can't draw straight lines, I do know that much, yeah, we've got the stop there that allows the muck out to the second filter, yeah, after it's caught it's collected in, I think they're really fine. Yeah, I think it was 60 denier or less or something stupid. Really fine anyway. Yeah, that collects the muck. But in this one, I have, if you remember going back to the build of it, four outpipes. Yeah, now, if I get rid of the filter and we'll just keep the pipes, just so it's easier for people to visualise. Yeah, look, I can. Uh, I can't get round up. There we go. Four outpipes. These outpipes go. Yeah, down and across. Down and across. Yeah. So the whole bed has pipes running across the very bottom. Yeah. These work exactly the same as the water gallery I had. They've got hundreds and hundreds of holes in them. They don't clog for the simple reason you're throwing water down them. Water pushes the stones out. Occasionally it lets one in if the pump's off, but they're blown out again anyway. 
At the far end, I have, if you've ever looked at my bed when you've seen the pictures, yeah, up pipes with a cap on them, yeah. Now, if I took the cap off and the bed's blocked, they're full of water right to the very top, yeah, because water will find the easiest route. It will run down this pipe, go, the bed's blocked, go up this pipe, and the moment I take the cap off, it'll blow any air out, yeah, and start flooding. Then I know the bed's got a problem. Now, it's been running for two and a half years now, yeah, and every time I've taken them off and looked down, the water's at the same level this end as it is this end. So, this is theory. Can't say it's truth, because, hey, I'm not some sort of nutter who does science for a living. But what I believe happens is my water comes down here, yeah, chooches along these lines, looks for the easiest route to get to my outpipe. Let's draw an outpipe. Yeah. There we go, nice bleak, bleak. You want a bleak one, do you? Nice big outpipe. Yeah, it actually runs half the bed. And that has holes in it to accept water. And it's about two inch below gravel level. Right, so what happens, yeah, about there actually, pretty much up to the uh, filters. Right, so what happens? Well, it goes down my bag galleries. I call them galleries because it's a nice, easy turf. Yeah, it chooches up through the gravel where it thinks it's found the easiest route. Any muck that's left in it, it deposits in this gravel. Now, there's always going to be muck in it. I'll never get rid of it all. Yeah, the only way I'm going to get rid of it all is to throw it through huge amounts of filters. Don't know about the rest of you, but I ain't got 15 grand to spend on filters. So. It deposits whatever bits it's built up in that gravel. Catches the outpipe, buggers off back to the pond. Now, this is the bit that I really like about my design. So, this filter breaks, and it goes into flood mode, yeah, which, if I draw with the filter sideways on for you, in... there you go, look. <sighs> Can you see all of that? Yeah, pretty much. Right. If the filter blocks, so my little filter, yeah, that does the pre-filter on the gravel bed, if this here, the sieve, blocks, yeah, so I'm still throwing water into this at a great rate of knots, yeah, and it's blocked. You can't get to these pipes here, yeah, so what does it do? It runs down here drops over the edge, goes into the little outpipe where I've got parasites. and the wife keeps wondering why I buy them. Yeah, it's not to wear, honestly. Yeah, well then again. Um, it drops into the bucket, it's filtered by parasites, which is the emergency filter. Now the tights are the magic bit, because when there's no, when there's just clean water thro running through them, the dribble that I put through it every day, yeah, it is, they stay nice and thin. But when you start throwing 5,000 litres through them, yeah, they expand to fill the bucket. And then they get to the top of the bucket, yeah, and they go in a big bubble. I know what that looks like, don't say it. Anyway. <laughs> They expand into a big bubble outside the bucket, and I know then the filter needs a clean. It's a very, very simple system. That's if the filter plugs. Ow! Put splinter in that piece of cloth. Right, second bit. What happens if the bed blocks? The bed can't block. If you're throwing water in at the bottom, which we are, yeah, no matter how much crap ends up in this bed, yeah, the water will look for an outroot. The only way it can block is if this outpipe blocks. And so far, and I've had it off a couple of times just to check, yeah, it is pretty much crystal clear inside the odd bit of green gunk which you always get with your pardon, but pretty much crystal clear, yeah. So, 
That is my only weak point in the whole system, this top one, which is two inches underneath the gravel, which means I don't have to do what a lot of people do with gravel beds. And when the roots have been in here, trying to clog it up, yeah, there you go, nice big root ball, scribbly root ball. Yeah, when those roots try and block it up, the water's coming up, not down to get out, up, yeah? So all I've got to do, this is what I do, well I haven't done it yet, I've not had need to. I've got two options. I can feed my hose pipe into this one, yeah, and round the corner and down into the pipe and blast it with general tap water. I don't like that theory, but it is a possibility. The one I actually do like, and I tried it when I first built it to make sure it works, is I feed an airline down, yeah? And I feed the airline down to roughly wherever you would think the blockage is, yeah? And I turn the air pump on. And the air pump, because it's sat in water, this is a constant depth bed, yeah? Because it's sat in water, blasts everything out, because air is way more powerful than water at shifting things, yeah? So, I know that's sort of an idiot's design, but there you go, it worked. If anybody ever needs help designing one of these, I'm willing to have a shot at it. I've got to be honest, the new aquaponics beds work on the old system where, old system, you throw water in just there, yeah, and you take it out just there, yeah. I'm not complaining, it works for thousands of people, but my big bed, yeah, the one with the giant plants in up the other end, is 8 foot by 4 foot by 13 inch. I don't enjoy climbing on top of that and digging the gravel out, yeah, there's an awful lot of gravel and I don't enjoy cleaning that much of it either, it's about one and a half tonne of gravel, yeah. I ain't dragging that out to clean it again, ever, yeah. Hence the build system. This thing is six bags of gravel. Yeah, you can pretty much do it with a hand trowel in half an hour each bed. I'm not overly worried about that. And at the moment, I've only got one with gravel in it. Yeah, so I'm seeing how it goes. Yeah, if it starts clogging, yeah, which I'll know ooh, this time next year after I've done the second full grow in it, yeah, it will be ripped out and we'll have a pipe system built it built into the bottom yeah not sure on any design on that yet but that's what will happen so for the person that asked yeah which hasn't done it in youtube that's roughly how it works if you're still unsure give me a shout okay and with that it's don't forget to subscribe don't forget to complain at me for being an idiot. Don't forget to do whatever YouTube tells you, tells you to do, or in most cases, not what it tells you to do. And, there you go. Have a good one. That's it for today, it's time to say goodbye. Why don't you subscribe, like me, hate me, who cares? And have a nice day. Bye. <laughs>